is my prayer simple? This, is, this should help a lot of people. And when you pray, Jesus says, by yourself in that room, I would suggest, as I have on your knees with a list, when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. The pagans had a habit of endless repetition in their prayers. Anybody heard of that? Praying the same thing over and over? The Lord's Prayer we're going to go into in a minute. People do that with the Lord's Prayer. Don't they call them something like our fathers or something? You say it over and over. That's fun to do that. You want to do it? Go ahead. Shh, I got to be able to hear you. We could get a whole room of people doing it. Now everyone do it. Let's listen. What is that? All right? You're saying the same thing over and over and over again. Almost chanting. This is from paganism. This is not Christianity. It's from paganism. In the New Testament times, they had polytheism. They made up a bunch of gods. Each one was assigned to a certain thing. Each one had his own faults, if you can imagine it. And so they kind of angled around the faults of that god, and they made up a specific incantation that they would just jam on that god particularly. If you want to sell your house, you got one god. If you want to get healthy, you got another god. If you want to, uh, right across the board, paganism has a different little incantation for every little situation. When you pray, don't heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do. For example, do you remember when uh, Elijah was on Mount Carmel and he had the showdown with the prophets of Baal and Asherah? Do you remember he prayed a simple prayer, but before he did, it's, I'll just read the text to you, 1 Kings, 1 Kings 18, 26, and they called on the name of Baal from morning to evening, saying, oh, Baal, answer us. Oh, Baal, answer us. Oh, Baal, answer us. They chanted like that from morning till evening. So that was at least 12 hours they had that going. Verse 29 of 1 Kings 18 says, they raved, raved until the time of the evening sacrifice. They, they, they got so worked up in a frenzy, they cut themselves with, see how serious I am, God? It's sick. That's sick. God doesn't want you to hurt yourself. God's not reluctant to answer prayer. You don't overcome a reluctant God through some persistent, demanding pursuit. Is my prayer simple? Simple. Notice, well, you say, why do they do this? Jesus says, they think that they will be heard for their many words, verse 7. If if I say that a hundred times, he might answer me, but what if I say it a thousand times? What if I say it a thousand times a day for a week? Maybe God will hear me then. What if I could say it? What if somehow I could go away and get on an island and say it 10,000 times. You know, when I was thinking about this, this blah, 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 <laughs> the thought that came to mind was, do you remember that, Walt, um, that uh, Bugs Bunny cartoon with that big, tall rooster? What was that ro- rooster's name? Foghorn. Yeah, Foghorn Leghorn. That guy. <laughs> blah, blah. I remember one cartoon. I don't know. I've always remembered it. But there was one episode where he just wouldn't stop talking. He was like, talk, 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 talk to this cat. Until all of a sudden the cat reaches across, slaps him in the face and goes, shut up. (laughs) And then he goes, shut up, I'll shut up. Don't have to tell me to shut up twice. I'm not one of those people who has to keep flapping my jaws all the time. Tell me to shut up, I won't say another word. Well, I remember when I was young, my dad told me to shut up. I wouldn't shut up, darn near starved to death. Wouldn't tell him I was hungry. You know, he just goes on and on and on like this. Like, James, you're giving me a headache, correct. Correct. Do you, do, you ever, do you ever wonder what all of our praying sounds like coming up to God? How patient he must be. Sometimes I think if we could hear our prayers from God's perspective, we would say, you have to listen to all this? Vain repetition. We need to knock it off and get to the point. I love all the people in my family, but if you were hanging out with, you would know that I have a very special place in my heart 
uh, for my daughter. One of my greatest faults is, is that I just want to meet her needs. Now, if she came up to me when she was a little teeny girl and she said, uh, hi, Dad, I just want to thank you that you're my dad, and I, I just want to say that I'm so glad that you're here with me right now and, and you know, willing to be my dad and, and such a good dad that you are. And, and I, I was like, what do you want? What do you want, honey? Just tell me what you want. And God loves you like that. And I wonder how many times God's like, I love you. Just, just what do you want? Get, tell me what's on your heart. Verse 8 says it so well. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Okay? Prayer isn't to inform God. God's not listening. So, oh, so that's what you want. God knows what we want before we ask. All right? The purpose of praying is not for God to learn what we want. The purpose of praying is to express faith toward God. That's what it is. You're not instructing God. You're not informing God. You're not explaining. I'll guarantee you no one here has ever prayed. And in your prayer, God was like, oh, now I see. All right then. Oh, okay. Well, that changes everything. Just turn to your neighbor and say, God sees everything. God knows everything. All right? And, and we don't inform God. So 